Hi folks, in this video we're going to be looking at painting the Skaven sewer base that I built in the last video. So without any further ado, let's cue the music. I've started out by giving the base an all over coat of black primer. For the first colour I'll be coming in with Skaven Blight Dinge from Games Workshop and I'll be doing sort of a medium thickness dry brush over this. I'm starting to build up the colour in layers but I'm being light enough that we can see some splodges of black in the shadows and in the cracks and crevices between the stones of this sewer side path. I'm happy with my Skaven Blight Dinge. I am then coming in with Storm Vermin Fur and once again I'll be dry brushing this colour and I'm going to be a little more selective with this in terms of its placement and I might do a bit more of a stippling motion. Basically I want to leave this as sort of patches and sort of areas that have been more readily trod or have caught a bit of light coming through a grate. Really sell the effect of worn stones. I would stipple and push this colour into various areas rather than doing an all over dry brush. The splodging and stippling effect really allows for some varying in the colour tones and allows us to really sell this as worn stone slabs. And you can do as many or as few coats as you want on this, as long as you're happy with the colour grading, that's absolutely fine. And with the building up in light coats, as I've done here, we can really see that lovely transition starting to form. To add some dirt and slime to this base, I'm coming in with some splotching shades of Athonian Camo Shade and Agrax Earth Shade from Games Workshop. And then applying these straight out of the pot and splodging them onto, on some areas of the stones that I want to look a bit more slimy and weathered. And once I've applied them in the area, I'm then taking a wet brush and sort of feathering out the edges. And if you think that it's a bit weak, then you can come back in with a second pass and just focus it in the middle of the area that you've done. And as you can see, you can build up a nice gradient by feathering out with a wet brush and applying a second pass to enhance a stronger colour in the centre. I'm using the Agrax Earth Shade as like a rough panel line wash and I'm focusing more on the cracks and crevices between the stones. But I'm not too worried as it goes over as that will lend to the griminess and general nastiness of this sewer base. Once the wash has had plenty of time to dry, I'm then doing a little bit of a dry brush with Dawnstone just to blend it all together. Now this is quite a light pass, it's just to pick out any edges, any final light bits of stone you want to do and to make it so that any rough edges of the wash get blended in with the grey stone. Next I'm coming in with Caliban Green from Games Workshop which I've thinned down a little bit more than normal with water and I'm coming in and painting in the base layer which is going to be the water area for our sewer. And I'm being almost quite patchy with this and I'm leaving the black of the base into the shadows and in the areas. And what we're going to be doing is building this over a couple of paths until we get more of a water looking cover rather than a solid base coat. After a couple of passes the Caliban Green should look something like this. I'll then come in with some Warpstone Glow once again from Games Workshop and I've thinned this down quite heavily this water and I'm applying in some rough patchy highlights. And you don't have to be very neat with these, we are going to be coming in with some water effects over the top. But if you want, you can wash your brush off and with a clean damp brush start to feather out the edges of these splodges and that will aid with some form of transition between the two colours. Next, I'll be using some hammered copper from Vallejo Game Color to apply a base coat to the sewage pipe that is sticking out into the sewer water. I'm being careful here not to get it on any of the stone or onto any of the sewer water itself. But if you make any mistakes, don't worry, just wait for it to dry and neaten up with base colors of the other areas. And with this, I'm not looking to do anything fancy, I'm just getting a base coat all over the sewage pipe. Next, I'm going to be using English Uniform from Vallejo and we're painting a base coat onto the skull that I've got here sat poking out from the stones into the sewage. I've thinned this down with a little bit of water and we'll just look for a couple of thin coats to get a nice smooth finish. 
Once this is dried, I'll be coming in with Carrick Stone from Games Workshop and I'll be laying up all the raised areas and I'll be leaving the English uniform in the recesses. If you didn't have English uniform, Steel Legion Drab from Games Workshop would have been an ideal colour for the base coat. And with this, we're not being especially neat as this is just part of our base, but we're just doing enough to give us some colour definition between the raised areas and the shadows. As a final highlight, I'm using some Ushabti Bone from Games Workshop and just picking out some of the more prominent features such as the eye socket and the brow ridge line. Now this is an entirely optional step considering this is a base, but I quite like throwing it in. Once that's dry, we can then come in with the fun stuff. I'm taking an old brush and I'm applying some Vallejo Pacific Blue water texture effects over the areas that we want to be our sewer water. Now this is a translucent material once it's fully dried and the areas that are less solid with the blue will allow the colour underneath to show through. So the thicker we apply this, the more blue the finish is going to be. So I'm looking to build this up in a patchy effect with, the, with a thinner layer over those brighter spots that we've done and a thicker area over the pipe. So we've got that nice gushing water effect coming out. Now this will dry with a glossy finish and it will take an awful long time to dry. So I recommend leaving this overnight before you do any further progress on the base. Once the water effect has dried, it should look something like this. And as you can see, that green is really starting to show through. But now that it's dry, we can start to dirty up some of the metal work. And with this, I'm taking an old brush and applying an even layer of typhus corrosion all over the metal work. If you spill any onto the water, don't worry. You can just mop it up with a wet brush. And if you want, you can rub some of this typhus corrosion onto the cracks and onto the stones. And this will start to represent some gritty dirt. And if you think that the edges are too harsh, then what you can do is you can take a wet brush and just like we did earlier in the other steps, you can feather it out and lead it to a bit more of a staining effect. And this is a nice easy way of getting that brown gunky feel with a little bit of grit without having to put in too much effort into it. And I've made a little bit of mistake with this on the pipe. And I do believe I cleaned this up in a little bit, but you can just wash this away with a wet brush. It's much easier to do this whilst it's still wet than before it dries. For the next step, I'm using some Contrast Apothecary White from Games Workshop, and I'll be putting this in the area where the water is going to have movement. And the reason I'm using a contrast paint for this is it'll dry quite transparent, and so it'll have a nice lighter colour. Although it looks quite stark going on now, it will dry mostly clear. And you can build this up in layers, and you can be quite soft with it, and a wet brush will very easily blend this out into the Vallejo water texture. But you can just use this paint just to spot it on in areas, and it will just give the impression that the water is moving. And you don't have to be particularly neat with this, and you don't have to do too much, it just needs something that you can have a nice bit of colour variation. Once it's dried, it won't look anywhere near as stark as this, but I do recommend if you've done a sewage pipe, to build up a second layer once it's dried to really show off that movement of water. Once that contrast paint is dried, it's gone quite translucent and you can really see how it's aiding to that illusion of fast flowing water out of that sewage pipe. And I've now super glued the Skaven Warp Fire Throw team into place on this so you can see how they look on the base. And just to finish this base off, I'm going to add a bit of vegetation onto the stones. To do this, I've applied a small amount of white PVA glue and I'm coming in with some mixed green flock from Woodland Scenics, but you can use any green flock that you'd like. And I'm going to sprinkle this over onto the PVA glue and tap off any excess back into my pot. 
And what this is going to do is it's going to give the illusion of moss and slimy green that started to grow into the dirt on the cracks. And it doesn't have to be much, but it's just to give the illusion that some vegetation. And what it will do is it will allow some colour variation onto the sewer paving slabs that we've done. And with that, the Skaven Warp Fire Thrower team on Sewer Base is now complete. Ready to go sneaking into the cities of the mortal realms and kill kill all those that reside there. If you like this tutorial, why not consider subscribing? It's free of charge, it helps me out, and if you hit the notification bell, you get further updates in your feed on further tutorials just like this one. Till next time folks.